as believers, we are not David but Solomon. The scripture reveals how David's life and reign was characterized by wars, and David was said to have won all his battles. On the other hand, Solomon's life and reign was however characterized by peace. Jesus is our conquering king, he has won all the wars for every believer thus, we are more than conquerors. In this teaching series Pastor Chumdi Ohahuna unveils how as believers it is important to know what the finished work of Christ means and what this knowledge avails the believer in Christ. Now listen. Drifted us into some periods, amen. Uh, and we have to obey Him, praise God. Because in every season, you must obey the Holy Spirit for that season. Every season builds up into another season, amen. amen. And the, uh, the build up of seasons give birth to an outstanding result, praise the Lord. Amen. And we are being on a, a, a word of the word that God gave us for this year. We never knew that that would be the word God we emphasize And that is this is the year of, as this, this year commences our Solomonic era, which shall be characterized by great peace. And the great affluence, praise God. And we began to understand more about this teaching. And the first one that stood is that Jesus is our David. That David had to finish his work so that Solomon can enjoy what? Peace. And we began to understand that Jesus is our David. And lastly, we understood that for us to enjoy peace, there are 14 things we have to we have to understand and implement in our lives. This is to be very well. God has given us all that pertains to life and godliness, but if we don't take the all, what do we want for us? So it's an responsibility of God to take the all. God cannot, God cannot, God cannot make, make you at peace for you. I you what I'm saying? You have to be at peace for yourself. When I tell you, was speaking once, and he said, uh, a man came to visit him, and the man said, his woman was, 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 was in trouble. Why? Because he was having serious challenges. I think there was a court case, he didn't know what he said, and he didn't know what to do about it. And he was in serious stress and worry. And can I tell you, told him, cast your cares upon Jesus. He said, what do you mean? He said, stop worrying. And he told him, can I say, I cannot stop worrying. If it's only one, I cannot stop worrying. I can tell you, there is nothing I can do for you. If you cannot stop worrying, there is nothing I can do for you. Because God will not stop worrying for you. You have to stop worrying for your what? Self. God will not take, God will not cast your cares for you. You have to cast it by your self. And he said, all right, if you cannot do it, there is nothing I can do. And the man said, okay, I will do. I will do. I will try to do. And the man actually, Depending on the Holy Ghost and casting his cares at the feet of Jesus, he stopped worrying. When he stopped worrying, the stomach upset first disappeared. And at the end of the day, the court case never ended. Praise God forevermore. Yeah. So if God says this is our season of the morning, but it's causing my sharing to us in the morning era, it means we have the responsibility to take. And these 14 items we listed out last week, we are going to be starting with the first one. I thought the first one would be something that we can just finish up in one Sunday, so we'll go to the next Sunday, do the second one. But I'm surprised that even the first one, we may not go that far today. Praise God forevermore. Yeah. First thing is what we need to understand the finished work of Jesus. We need to understand the finished work of Jesus. John chapter 19, verse 30 says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Holy Spirit, we ask for revelation and insight into your world in the name of Jesus. Living the life of Christ entails living a life of peace and living at peace. We must understand that. Amen. But living the life of Christ in this world, living the life of peace and living at peace. As saints and believers in and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can only live a life of peace and live at peace when we fully understand the finished work of Jesus and appropriate it in our lives. Are we together? Yes. Until we understand the finished work of Jesus and fully appropriate in our life, we can never live a life of peace. We can never. I remember um, what uh, Bishop Hugo said. The Lord, we built uh, Garden of Faith. It took three years to build Garden of Faith. But just a little back in the power of capacity. And then the Lord told me, we built 50,000 stack capacity in one year. Ah! That was two, three years. Then 50,000 were in one rush. How can you rationalize that? And he said, two weeks at the time of dedication, they came to me and said, Ah, Papa, you are trying. See, you saw this one, you are trying. They are not yet moved to the building. <laughs> 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 and 
get some hundreds of millions of dollars and we say, Papa, you are very clever when you are trying at least. Let's just postpone the dedication of it. It is for that one. We have seen that in one year, you have raised it to moving level. Ah, you are trying. You are trying. Just postpone it a little too. Well, let's do this thing, man. Let's do it. No problem. We we'll see your faith. We we'll celebrate your faith. Ah. And he went to make the money. He said, What's the same? And God asked him, How long did it take me to build the whole earth? He said, Not only. He told the Lord, Seven days. He said, No, 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 not only go. You will see. He said, Six days. In fact, the actual fact that it was less than six days. Because man was created on the six days. So five days, God finished everything about creation. Man entered six days. Seven days, God rested. And then God said, If it took me that time to build, the whole earth we are, we are, we are, we are all living on. And what is that your, your, your small, your, your infinitesimal 15,000 capacity? Ah! He said, jump down and get ready to get to the rich out there. Two months, two months. No, it was two months left for them back then, not two weeks. Two months. It was two weeks period was when they needed to raise the movie. The money for the movie. He said, two months, two months. Two months, two months. Ah, two months. That came based on revelation. And it was at least, and a bishop, and when he said something, he said, he was not that. The bishop, why are you really going to have an answer? You notice that the man was so much at peace, so relaxed, and was living his life like nothing was happening, like we were not even living. And he said, ah, why should I be talking my head? Where's my God? He's at peace, then I'm worried. I have to see if my guy is at peace. See, this is the understanding that Jesus wants us to have. This is what God wants us to have. See, when you are at peace, you confuse your enemies. When you are at peace, you confuse the devil. You will beat him. The devil has a stronghold when we are betrothed. But when we are at peace, we will beat the devil. We confuse him with disability. We throw up balance. <laughs> so we must understand the finish work of Jesus. The reason for this is that. Only a full understanding of the finished work of Jesus can empower us to live like Christ. Only a full understanding of the finished work of Jesus can empower us to what? To live by Christ. When the disciples came to Jesus, ah, and they cried, oh, 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 you are crying. He said, only as they say, only of what? Live to faith. He didn't say, only of no faith. It's only of what? Live to faith. The issue was not that they didn't have it, they had faith, but for that particular issue of ground, their faith, the capacity they had was not enough to, to, to do what? To deal with it. It's not as Christians don't understand what the finish of Jesus is, but they don't have full understanding. So that's the reason why they are still perturbed in some areas of their life. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they are still disturbed in some areas of their life because they lack full understanding. When you have a full grasp of it, there's no area that you have. Trouble. A lot of saints lose their peace from time to time. Why not does not enjoy peace despite the fact that they are saved? And we know that. The reason for this is insufficient knowledge about the finished work of Christ. Insufficient knowledge about the finished work of Christ. Praise God. A half well full cup has water in it, but the water in it cannot accomplish the task which a full cup will accomplish. Is that also? Yes. They both have water. One halfway full, another one full to the brim. They are both full, but one half, one full to the brim. What the one that is full to the brim will accomplish, the one that is halfway full cannot accomplish it. Praise God forever. This explains this the reason why a lot of saints are not living in peace. Their knowledge of the finished work of Christ is what? Insufficient. Insufficient, praise God. When it is fully inclined, eh? Charlie, no, you mean? There is nothing, no quaking, no, no jumping, blah, 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 that will stop you. Can I tell you, sir? Somebody came and met him. And they were sending them around their Bible college. They were still building them. He said, at that time, they, were, they needed money, seriously. Money, money. And he said, the person asked him, he said, you must be under serious pressure. Building all these big, big, big projects is a pressure. What did I He said, what? He said, if I, I'm, I'm, this is the most relaxed time of my life. I'm not under any pressure of any kind. He said, it is God, it is God's school. He told me to build it. Is it my school? Is his college? It's his very problem. If he doesn't want to finish it, that's his business. It is not my business, it is his business. <laughs> the man was surprised. I said, and he said, he said, that's the way he was going to be man. The other one, like, they, they needed money like 
God's business. They didn't want to see us. Say, but he, he was at peace and relaxed. He said, at the end of the day, all the promise came. And he accomplished the task. Are we together? Yes. Sufficient knowledge of the peace of God makes us snow in the storm. It makes us relax despite the challenges we see. Are we together? And the devil knows that sense don't understand the finish of God. So that's why he throws his arrows every now and then. Are we together? Are we together? Some of us feel that oh, Jesus did not accomplish some things when he came to earth and he left them for us to accomplish. That's the way some Christians believe. How to help Jesus finish the work of the Lord? <laughs> that has been people sometimes. The quest to accomplish what we think Jesus did not accomplish places so much pressure on us, and this makes us lose our peace. You see, that is what we must understand the nature of Jesus. Yeah. Because the pressure that has come on the church of Jesus in recent times is so serious that sometimes Jesus looks and says, what are you trying to do? Even what are you doing? Sometimes Jesus has to look down and ask us, what are we doing? Because he wonders what we are doing. When we are doing it all, what are we not trying to do? Are we together? Yes. yes. The way Christians live our life nowadays, we live as if Jesus is not responsible for us at all. We live as if we have an irresponsible father called him. And it pains the heart of God to see that we make him look like an irresponsible father. He looked at them, Jesus looked at him and said, Which of you here? You to be here with your son, ask you for a piece of bread, a loaf of bread, and you give him the son, all of them say, never, go for me, watch them dance. And he said, okay, which of you here with your son, ask you for a fish, and you give him the son, and they say, why, how, which way? He said, ah, if you eat food, he got an eat food. If you even have fathers, know how to do good for your son, how then shall your heavenly father you want to ask. But the way we pay God most of the time, we pay him as though God will not even give us anything when we ask. At least he was telling them if you ask for a loaf of bread, you give so. At least if Father gave something, you get so. But the way we pay God, we pay him as if he wouldn't even give us anything. This God is so stingy. The way we pray, we pray as if God is wanting everything in heaven. What does God need a car in heaven for? What does God need children in heaven for? What does he need a house in heaven for? What does he need health in heaven for? His life is health himself. You are the one who is not mine. God is eternity. <laughs> but we pray as though God is health, God is visible, and we live so this of what if God does not do it. That's the wise domain of many believers. We don't have the abundance of the reality that says what if God overdoes it. I didn't say I wanted. He had to start begging. 
for them to stop the suppliers of talking. That is the God we eat. Hmm. When God pours a glass for you, he makes sure he spills it over the table. Yeah. <laughs> Seven services in a, in a Sunday. Even with the seven, it's not enough for you people. Okay, we have to we have to shoot it like this and like that and like that. Even with all my pastors preaching, we don't have enough for it to preach to. Because when God pours and after that and that, He always does what spills over the table. <laughs> yeah. I remember what was someone Bishop I was I was going to the man said why I listened to him so last week. He said anything you are going to be buoyant of. You will initially be bankrupt of it. So here yeah, we are. I'm not sure that God is going to overdo. Yeah. There is a peace concerning it. Yeah. I can know something. Yes. Yes. But this peace comes only by the revelation of the finish of the cross. The reason for the lack of peace in the life of saints is insufficient for the revelation of Christ. In order for us to understand the finish of Christ, we must first of all know the work that Jesus came to do. Amen. You can't know the work you finish if you don't know the work you came to do. Is that also? Yeah. So, you see, I, I, one of the things I, I know that God has blessed me with is a teaching grace. Amen. Yeah. Why did they give me teaching grace? Because I'm not a very intelligent person. Praise God. In fact, as a child, I was born. By the help of the Almighty, I began to read. <laughs> Amen. And I began to, I'm not a very intelligent person. And I'm somebody who likes to learn A, B, C, D. Teach me, break it down for me. And I can understand. We have always talked about the finished work of Jesus. We've heard about that in the church time also. But what exactly is the finished work of Jesus on our world? No matter what is what he came to do, if we say the finished work of Jesus is the work that Jesus finished, what was the excellent thing to the world? What was the work he came to do? Are we together? Yeah. For proper understanding of the finished work of Jesus, we we'll answer this question. The first question we we'll answer is Was it just one task the Father gave to Jesus? Or were they more than one tax? You see that? See, because the understanding of this question, when we understand it, it will make us apply it appropriately. Oh God, the next generation of Christians that the Lord is raising are Christians that be at peace. You see them without money in their pocket, but they are relaxed. <laughs> they are smiling. You know, what is it, Brother Charlie? Your man not just give a big notice and you are smiling. You are praising God. You are at peace. You are relaxed. This is the next generation of Christians that God is raising. And this, all these, all these petal troubled Christians that we have now, uh, they, they are giving with the next generation of Christians. Yeah. And if God will do it by His own mighty hand, then we ask us, what has happened to you people? Mm. That's what we ask. What has happened to you people? That's the next generation of Christians that God is raising. They will say, these people, there's nothing that God fools them. There's nothing that God fools them. They are laughing, they are excited. No money in their pocket, they are excited. In fact, that's why they now start praising God. That's the next list of Christians that God is raising. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. The second question we have to ask answer is Did Jesus accomplish the task given to him by the Father? Amen. Amen. The works of Jesus are the purpose of Jesus. Amen. Amen. They are actually the reasons why Jesus came. And um, I, I was working on the, on the internet and I was able to get the material which I developed. Amen. And the material, um, I, I got it from um, Joel Arubi and we the broadcasting, the authors of the book, Why Christ Came. So I expanded on it. And this material actually is a good material. They, they, they listed out 31 reasons why Jesus came to it. Wow. 31 reasons. And we're going to be exploring on every of these reasons. See, that is why it's a teaching church. Amen. Amen. We have time to teach. Let's teach the world. Tell you this is why Jesus came. The first reason why Jesus came was to do the Father's will. First reason was to do what? Do the Father's will. John chapter 6, verse 38 says, For I am come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Praise God. Hebrews 
chapter 10, verse 7 says, Then said I, Lord, Jesus, Jesus speaking here, Lord, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do the will, to do the will, O God. Now, the first thing Jesus understood was that he didn't come to do his own thing. You see, Christians, we live better because we are trying to do our thing. Are you understand what I'm saying? We live in fear, we live in panic, we live, we have panic attacks, different all manner of pressure and stress because we are trying to do our will. And hear me very well. So long as you try to do your will, you would have to sponsor it by yourself. Uh, I remember 2000 and 2009, or about 2010, the Lord told me, He said, your prosperity is in your box. That's what you want to say. Your prosperity is in your what? Box. So when you stay outside the box, you will enter into austerity. And your purpose is for God's will concerning your life. That's your purpose. It's God's will for your life. So long as you are doing the will of God, listen to me, child of God, child of God, you will live at peace. But if then you shift from the will of God to your own will, you are invited to trouble. Trouble. Trouble that you cannot manage. I always tell people, I don't know how to choose. From childhood, I don't know how to choose. I don't know how to choose. Till tomorrow, I don't know how to choose. So I have a, since I know I have a choice problem, I always pray. That's that I have a choice problem. So I always pray and ask God for His will. I thank God for those who know how to choose. I wish I was like them, but I thank God that I'm like them. Praise God. I have a choice for them, so I ask God for His will. And I know I don't ask God for His will. Now, when God gives me His will, He will form His will. Hear me very well. God will never form your loss. He will only form His will. With the mentality, they will not get an answer to the prayer. But he said, when he pray in his way, he does what? He hears you. So that means when you don't pray in his way, he didn't hear at all. Yes. Stop complaining. <laughs> God will only fund his work, not your lust. Jesus knew, he said, I come in the volumes of the, of the book. Don't do your way, but the book will know. And once again, he said, I remember what brought me there. He remembered John, what he said in John 6, verse 38. He remembered what he said in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. And then he said, God, again, I repeat it, not my will, but my will. And the Bible said, after he prayed up there, what happened? Angels came to God, comfort him. See, you will only receive comfort when you are allowed the will of God to cry in your life. You will remain in discomfort. You see, sometimes we listen to my life is so discomfortable. The reason why life is going is because you are trying to ins insist on your will. Are we, are we, are we together? Yes. Once you allow the will of God rule, Charlie, comfort comes. People will want you, but the way that sits in the house you are saying is so discomforting. How are you comforted with this discomfort? I think there's a will of God. The will of God. What the will of God always gives a man comfort. Even when people don't understand what is making comfort to you. Yeah. Another action. Jesus came to do the will of the Father. That's what he came to do. That's what he came to do. See, and every one of us as children of God, we must understand this that we came to do the will of the Father. See, I didn't come to earth to come and buy and sell. Are you understanding? Yes. I came to earth to raise disciples for Jesus. That is the only reason. See, and to make you understand that any time I'm trying to do anything other than that, God spoils it. The only thing I've succeeded in doing consistently for years is the, is the word of God. Yeah, yeah. I began to think, and I said, my first, of all, my first desire in life was to preach the gospel. That was my first desire. At the end of six, that was my first desire. At the end of 11, I was the first person to preach to the school 
to, 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 to full school. I said the school fellowship in my secondary school. It's full school with all these students. I gathered everybody in that school and I preached the people. If I gather a crowd, I'll give them a uh, uh, right, but I must see that crowd and leave them. Yeah. <laughs> see, it's not the it's, it's not the bushel. The devil cannot think about it. If at 11 I got that crowd, forget that in I must gather ground. Yeah. Even if I don't want to gather that and I will must gather ground. Yeah. It was this thing that we made consistent at doing and have improved over the years at doing. Everything I tried to do outside this, somehow God stops it. We were created to do the will of God. You only find peace when you are in the center of the will of God. Yes. Mm. Jesus understood this principle. That's why we say the early hours of the day, he will go to complete with the path. What? Father, what is your will for today? I don't want him. I want peace. And he enjoyed a peaceful life because he understood how to live in the center of God's will. That's how. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes. The first thing that Jesus came to do was to do the will of the Father. Are we together? Yes. And what is the will of the Father that Jesus came to do? What is the will of the Father? What is the will of the Father? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some may count slackness, but is long suffering to us world, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. <laughs> So what is the will of God? The will of God is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this is going to be very good. When we pray, thy will be done, O Lord. We are actually saying, Lord, let none on earth perish. And let everyone come to repentance. So when you are praying that prayer, you are to fine tune your life to ensure that none is perishing around you. But you cannot be saying, Lord, let not perish. And they say, let us go for outreach. You say, Charlie, I have no stay. Let not perish, but give for, 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 for the work of the Lord. You say, ah, I, I, in fact, I have some pressing things to attend to. The reason why a lot of Christians, we are living a life of troubles on all sides is because we are praying one thing and asking another thing. Mm. That we be God the Lord. Let not perish. But when it's time for us to ask, our prayer, we give excuses. Jesus came so that no we perish. And for three and a half years, all he was doing was to ensure that no perish. He was so busy. The Bible says even at the end of 12, when he did like this, him and his parents went to the temple for, for the feast, and the parents left him there. He was with them with the doctors talking and enjoying conversation with them. Three days after they came to visit, and they said, Ah, ah, you, are, you gave us a warning, you gave us a scare. We didn't know we forgot you here. And he looked at him and said, Don't you know I will be about my father at the 12 years old? He understood it. I will, 12 years I will be about my father. I didn't come to come and do a uh, uh, baby of the house or mommy and daddy's boy. I came for my father's business. Daddy, I'm having your carpentry shop because I am a carpenter. Are you understand what I'm saying? That is my destiny. That's what I'm helping you. Mommy, I am helping you in the church because you know I have to obey my parents in the world. I have to honor my father and my mother. Everything. I have to fulfill this. Why am I doing all this? Because I must do the will of my father. See, when a man is purpose driven, everything he does is tied to purpose. His, his relationships are tied to purpose. His communication is tied to purpose. His money is tied to purpose. See, when you say purpose driven man, don't get angry with him. Purpose makes a man blind. Oh, he doesn't play with us. He doesn't talk with us. He doesn't relate with us. He doesn't do Hey, stop complaining about it. Ask why is he that? Why is he like that? There is something driving him. And let me let you know something. Is it that something is pursuing or not pursuing something? A purpose driven man is pursuing purpose. Jesus came for one thing. It's Jesus came and he said, the will of my father is that no should bring anything to ensure that nobody perishes. I will do it. Oh, as he's walking, going to, to heal a giant of his daughter. Oh, the woman with your blood came and told him, he said, who touched me? Rachel let me. He said, that one rent and next person. He will trust on the move to ensure that nobody perish. Nobody perish. Nobody perish. Nobody. Child of God, what are you pursuing? What's your drive? What is keeping you on? Is life all about sleeping and making a bowl of jump and come back? Is all about life for you? Life is bigger than that. The, the reason why most people they are caught short in their brand is because they don't discover purpose. And when you don't discover
come up with God will prefer, prefer to take you early instead of leave you there to waste. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Jesus came to, to the will of the Father, and that will was what? That none should perish. That none should what? Perish. He was driven with it, and that was what drove him to the cross. That was what. That was what held him on the cross. Are you understanding? No one must perish. No problem with me. No one must perish. No problem. Nail my hands. Nail my feet. No one must perish. And this means that it is the will of the Father for none to perish. Not the will of the ministers of God. Are you understanding? It is the will of the Father. Not a will. You see, Jesus said he came to do the will of the Father. Not his will. So let me read it again. He says, says, For I came from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. That makes us understand very well that the will of him that sent him could not be different from his own. Are you understand what I'm saying? The will of the Father could have been different from his own will. Why have I said so? Now he said it here, I didn't want to do my will. Now, your will, once you come into human flesh, your will becomes earth driven. Are you understand what I'm saying? It becomes earth driven, earth oriented. Your will becomes controlled by the five senses. Are we together? Yes. And whether we like it or not, somehow to a good extent, our wills are controlled by the five senses. The will of Elohim is not controlled by the five senses. The will of Elohim is controlled by eternity. Now, what is Elohim's desire? That none should want to perish. What is Elohim looking at? Eternity. Why am I looking at time? He's looking at what? Eternity. That's all. See, God is not moved by your time needs. God is moved by your eternal needs. Now, if God is going to give you anything in time, it is because that thing will help you fulfill eternity. <laughs> but you see, most of us, as human beings, we are usually moved by our time needs. And Jesus came in human flesh. So, as a human being, he began to know what time need was. Remember why he was in human flesh before he died? He was limited by time. Are you know something? He could not disappear and appear. Are you know something? He was hungry. He was tired. Those are time limitations. Are you getting it? So, as a human being walking in a human, as a God living in a human flesh, if he is not conscious of Elohim's will, he will become conscious of human will. So, when Jesus was speaking here, he was not speaking from the perspective of divinity. He was speaking from the perspective of what? Humanity. From heaven, not to do my will, humanity will, earth will, but what? But the will of Him that sent me, divinity will. Because He knew He was divinity in humanity. So for Him to succeed in the task, He must remove His focus from humanity and put it on what? Divinity. <laughs> Even Jesus had to do this. So that's why He always never wanted to ascribe any will of this. To his work. He always wanted to give to, to always focus on the will of him that sent him. Because the moment he starts looking onto the will of humanity, Charlie, he does move and change for us. Amen. He change for us. So the will that all should be saved is not the will of the minister of the gospel. Yes. It's not the will of the pastor. No. It's the will of God. Yes. This as ministers of God should not lose their peace because they want people to be saved. That's it. Uh, <laughs> don't lose your peace. Go and sleep, man of God. Do your work and sleep. You cannot save nobody. It is not that even Jesus said it's not his will. It's the will of the Father. So it's not that will for people to be saved. It is the will of God. Ah, so why do you want to that? I will not die because of the matter. I will keep my peace. <laughs> Salvation of sinner is God. And since God cannot lose his 
peace for any reason, no minister at all should lose his peace. <laughs> we are simply meant to do what? Enforce the finished work of Jesus by living conscious of the truth that we are not to be under any kind of pressure while seeking for the salvation of souls. Jesus on the cross, he ensured that all souls will be saved. He dealt with sin. He finished his work on the cross. It is real, but it's not real. So my own job is to do my own part. When God says pray, I pray. When he says fast, I fast. When he says preach, I preach. When he says give, I give. When he says crusade, I do crusade. When he says have fellowship, when he says preach online, when he says anything he says I do, I do. But say me lose the peace for such to be saved. Then we lose good. It is the Father's will. <laughs> Jesus understood this. You have to understand it. All you need to do what he said you should do. I remember I close with this. Reverend Wanda Jai was invited to, 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 to all the of Christ Bible Institute and they wanted him to come and teach on how to do effective ministry. <laughs> and he came on the microphone and he said, he went for a minister's conference and the person who was teaching was an elderly man of God, an experienced man of God. And he said, why the man was teaching? He got into so many beautiful principles. He said, but why the man was teaching, he was having a trouble in his spirit. He said, why should my spirit be troubled? This man is elderly. He's more experienced than me in ministry. He knows the work. Why should my heart be troubled? And he said, it's like he didn't even finish the conference. He had to go before time. He said, he went back home and he slept. He said, why did he walk up the next morning? He not told him, he said, Anywhere you attain by grace, never ascribe it to principles. <laughs> and he said, Wow. And he told them, I know you are starting to say many things. He said, But I will not tell you any one thing. Jesus was in the wedding in Canaan in Galilee. And they ran out of wine. And Mary came and told him, Hey, see what happened? He said, An hour ago. And then after that, Mary went and told the servant, What did he tell me? He said, was so, she told them, whatsoever, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. And he said, should I tell you what the, the how to succeed in ministry? He said, he said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. That is the simple game here yeah, to live at peace as a minister of gospel, as a Christian, as a child of God, who has a desire to see that no one goes to hell. Whatsoever he tells you to do, we believe you have been blessed listening to this teaching series. Kindly listen to more teachings on this series by Pastor Chumdi Ohahuna. Grace to you.